What's up guys and gals, and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. My name is Splattercat, and today in the world of indie games, we're checking out Steam Birds Alliance, the newest game from the developers of Realm of the Mad God. Uh, this is a free-to-play online roguelike, where essentially you try to level up and gather as much gear as possible, and if you die, you're dead for good, and you lose all your gear, and you start over from scratch. Uh, this time around, instead of wizards and knights and all that kind of stuff, it's actually a steampunk world where birds are at war with cats. And there's all kinds of mechas and tanks and ships and stuff like that that you can play as. Uh, it's definitely got like a bullet hell thing going on. I'm going to grab that real fast. I'm going to grab that real fast because like people can drop gear in town to help out people that have recently died. And I died last night right before. That's actually good though. I died on purpose so that I could start out fresh and show you what the game is like. And you can actually experience it. So anyways, I'm a big fan of Realm of the Mad God. I played it entirely too much back when it first came out. I really liked the way it was kind of fire and forget. It was an MMO that you could play and be good at without having to dump like an insane amount of time into it and it was really really enjoyable and I think that Steam Birds Alliance does a really really good job of recapturing that essence uh, we will take a look at the microtransaction scheme inside of the game as we get further on because just like Realm of the Mad God this is a free game you don't have to pay anything to play it and all of the gameplay is available to you from the beginning without you having to go through and purchase anything. You can unlock all of the ships, you can unlock all of the planes, all of the gameplay and whatnot without having to pay any money. But once we get further on into the video, and I've actually showed you some gameplay, probably with the last two or three minutes, we'll talk about the way that the game has been monetized. That way, you can figure out if that's going to be intrusive to you, and if you're going to enjoy that or not going to enjoy that. And I know that's the big question that always comes up with free-to-play games, which is why I tend to avoid them on my channel. Like, I think there's an expectation if you pay, like, 8 to 10 bucks to get into a game of the quality level, whereas with free-to-play games, that line gets a lot more blurred. Uh, but I know that that's the first thing that's going to come up when we get into the comments after the video is done. And so we will talk about that and touch on that today. But for now, let's play the game. Uh, I am playing as the Shield Maiden right now, which actually is my favorite mecha in the entire game so far. There are a bunch of different planes that you unlock by leveling to a certain level. Um, unfortunately, I don't know if I can look at them without being dead. So anyways, maybe I'll make a concerted effort to die near the end of this episode so that we can take a look at all the planes. But there's like 15 or 20 of them. Like, there's a bunch of planes. I might have the number off. Every plane has its own special ability. It has its own weapon type. It has its own play style. It has its own maneuverability and way that it functions. So, for example, the mechas are just wasps. They move around wherever you want them to. But if you're playing like one of the biplanes, it flies straight and then you steer it like a plane and it always maintains its forward momentum. Oh, cool. I got that. Did I get that engine right there? Yeah, they call me the Engine Jacker. All right, well, let's jump on into the dropship, and we'll go out to the main area of the map and see if we can get into some trouble. So already we know that we have a boss, the Time Ghost, that's like 300 meters that way if we wanted to fly out and handle that. All of these green dots are other players. Uh, if they light up like so, we can actually teleport to any other player that we want. So if a player puts down a rally flag, like he's really struggling and having a hard time, you can jump in. And it kind of does the same thing as Realm of the Mad God, where like occasionally you'll end up with these giant battles with like 50 players fighting just like endless hordes of AI. And it turns really, really chaotic and fun really fast. There's some rebel rats over here, huh? All right, let's go kill them. Let's go take these dudes out. Oh, cool. We got a new gun right there. Nice. Uh, the little number on the bottom is the tier of the weapon. This game uses a linear system. So really what you're looking for in a lot of these weapons is just that it has a higher tier than what you had before. And it'll be like a flat upgrade. That's an armor downgrade because of that armor, that level 5 armor that we picked up in town that was just like laying on the ground because someone left it there. It is a good idea in this game. I actually do recommend uh, kind of just like I bring stuff back to town all the time and drop it off for people who may have died. Uh, it's kind of cool that like if you store gear in this game, uh, you can basically get back on your feet like really, really quickly. Like my last character, I had a leftover T8 weapon that was just sitting inside my storage. And so when I died, I made another character and threw the T8 weapon on him and the T8 armor on him. And he was basically just as good as a max level character, if not entirely. I mean, he was missing some damage and some, you know, some, some of the extra perks of being high level. But, like, he still hit really, really hard for a level 1. 
and had tons and tons of HP for a level 1. So actually, just like Realm of the Mad God, this is not a hard game to get back on the horse with. We've already hit level 2, by the way. Level 20 is the max level. Once you hit that, you start to bank XP uh, that will go towards... Actually, this game has permanent progression, which is one of those things that I don't know if they ever added to Realm of the Mad God. I played Realm of the Mad God back in the day when it was a very, very simple game, and there wasn't a whole lot to it. And so people that have played Ma Realm of the Mad God now are probably playing a completely different game than what I played. But back in my day with Realm of the Mad God, there was only like six or seven classes, and like really there was the area where all of the players would do XP trains, and then once you did that, you would just go to the high level area and try to farm gear and like permanent bonuses and stuff like that, and there really wasn't that much more content. I think there was like a boss that you could like sometimes teleport to and fight with like a hundred other players, but other than that, that was all the content in the game. Uh, this game has a similar amount of content. In fact, I think it probably has a little bit more than Realm of the Mad God had when Realm of the Mad God came out, where you hit max level, and there's probably like two or three different areas you can go at max level that each have their own bosses that spawn over there and drop different loot. Uh, there is a crafting system that's been added to the game, so like once you get to max level, the enemies will start dropping crafting materials very, very rarely that will allow you to craft not only T8 weapons, which I think are the highest level weapons in the game, but also epic variants and rare variants of the T8 weapons that add like elemental damage or have like extra little special effects on them for you to think about to make you a little bit more solid in combat. So, you know, there is stuff to work on in this game. You will have, like, a good time with it. I've only been playing it for a couple of days, but I can definitely feel it recapturing sort of that feeling of Realm of the Mad God, which is one of the few games I've ever seen to addict me outside of, like, World of Warcraft and EverQuest to the level that it did. And so I think that right there kind of speaks to the job that the developers did, you know. Anytime I think you're working on, like, a sequel or, like, a follow-up to a game or, like, something that's in the same vein of by the same developer... Uh, and you release that to the previous audience that, you know, has been consuming the previous game for a really, really long time. There's always a chance that you're going to screw the pooch and really, really disappoint everybody. And with this game, I don't think that's the case. I think the developers with this title really, really showed that they had a good idea of what made Realm of the Mad God so popular. And whereas this game doesn't make itself super distinct from Realm of the Mad God, aside from, you know, kind of the aesthetic and the way the game is presented to the player... Uh, it is actually addictive in all the same ways that Realm of the Mad God is. So for right now, what we need to do is we kind of need to find our way out to a higher level area so that we can start stacking up some gear to make our lives a little bit easier. This character, oh, there's another player right there. Nice, he killed that dude. Oh, yeah. All right, well, let's just kick it with this guy for a little bit. This guy seems like he's going places. Hopefully, he hangs out around here and we'll have ourselves a little killing partner. Actually, it looks like he was maybe on his way through to somewhere else. It is efficient in this game just to go and find a party at the max level area and level up there just by leeching XP essentially from other people. I'm not going to do that because I want you to see all the in-between content that like a new player that doesn't have anybody to hang out with or maybe unfamiliar with the game would probably get themselves into. Oh my goodness, that hurts so much. I did not enjoy that at all. We are kind of getting bogged down right now. There are a lot of enemies around. We might get ourselves into trouble. Reload my weapon! Reload my weapon. So you might be asking about the UI, what's underneath our little mecha character right now. The left is our HP. You've probably locked onto that. The right side is our energy that lets us put up our defensive buff for us and anybody around us. You don't need to be in a party or anything else like that for people to benefit from your buffs. Uh, you can just stack them up with any randos that are around, which is actually really, really cool for those battles. Where, oh, it's really, really good for those battles where you've got like 40 players just running around. There's going to be a lot of explosions, a lot of shooting, and a lot of heals all over the place happening. And it makes the game feel very organic and very alive and sort of, I guess, improvisational, I guess, is a good way to describe a lot of the cool events that happen in this game. Uh, we just got buried. Yeah, I'm getting toasted right now. I don't really want to die at level 6. That'd be kind of embarrassing. I usually like to at least get to max level before I die. Uh, every vehicle in the game... Well, we lack the range to really fight this guy while he's putting down this massive smoke screen over here. Like, I need to get more shots off on him. I need to achieve a lock by getting that little green square on him before I can fire. And then I can get out of range of him. But until I get that little green square over the top of the robot, unfortunately, I can't unload my guns on him, which is... Not good. The puffer fish took a little damage right there. We still have, like, no upgrades flying around. I would like to get a better weapon just so we can increase our damage by, like, one or two on hit. But we are getting more damage every single time we level up, too. And we've already hit six, which is decent. It's not bad. Uh, the planes that I've played so far is I've played the quad, 
which is the one you start out with. I don't know what the quad special ability does. It obviously does something with regards to like how much XP you get, I think. Or maybe how much... I don't think it affects how much damage you deal, but he puts a little aura down on the ground that like increases something. Oh, really? We've got a quest. Okay, well, let's focus on not getting destroyed first. How about that? Because it's looking kind of scary out here. Uh, they want me to kill three nan... We want getting three nano honey from bee queens. Okay, I can give that a try, provided we don't get too bogged down by all the other nasty stuff in this area. Uh, I think that's something we can accomplish. I have noticed that the frame rate in this game is a little bit low. I can only assume because that that's like the, the game is still in development that like optimization is one of those things that's going to be worked on as time goes along. Uh, I do have a 2080 RTX and a pretty beefy rig for both streaming and recording games so that I don't ever miss out on anything. Um, but this game right here, it says it's running at 90 frames right now, but it definitely doesn't feel like 90 frames. So, like, my recording software is saying that the engine's running at 90 frames, but I'm not so sure. Uh, I'm gonna take out this Bee Queen, because I think she's got that Nano Honey. Oh, she also dropped an upgraded weapon. Nice. Sweet. So we've got a better weapon than we had before. I don't see us hitting that much harder. I think we're still dealing, like, 3 damage per shot, 4 damage per shot. But maybe someday. Maybe someday. That dude got took out. Alright, we got a Super Heal Aura. A gear for any class drops while you're around, so you will want to bank some of that stuff. Uh, and save it for other characters that you might end up playing as you try out new things. Hey, level 7, nice. Level 7's good. That increased the damage we did by 1 HP, which on a rapid fire character like ours is actually a really good thing. I didn't want you to lock on over there. That lock on was kind of unfortunate. We got a bunch of these little bee dudes after me right now, and I gotta get back in here and kill that guy so that they'll go away. There we go. Oh my god, there's a few too many bullets in this area. There's a few too many bullets up this alley. There we go. Wipe those guys out. I think, where was the bee queen at? We got one nano honey, right? I think I need more nano honey. Are there more bees around here anywhere? Because if there are, I would love to mess with them. I don't know. I don't see any bees around or anything else like that, so... Oh, there it is. It marked it for me. Nice. Uh, these quests are really important. They're randomly generated. You just get them every now and again to, like, kill a certain number of things or gather a certain number of items. Uh, when you complete them, you do get high-tier gear. And you do end up getting, like, a lot of XP that'll help you level up your class pretty quickly. It is helpful, so don't ignore the quests when they come up. It's basically like a free ladder back to where you were before your previous death. Yeah, that was a risky play right there, but I need to get rid of some bullets. Like, there are too many bullets on screen right now, and it's making it difficult for me to isolate my target. And yeah, there she is. Alright, bee lady. I need you to go down so that I can get that nano honey. Perfect. Another nano honey down. I think... So this class really, really struggles with any type of minion enemy because the lock-on is really finicky. And so it'll lock on to all the minions and whatnot when you're firing. And that'll make it so it's hard for you to kill the central hive that's spawning all of them. And just be aware of that if you're going to play the Shield Maiden. It is my favorite class, but it does suffer from some drawbacks just like every other class in the game. Oh my god. Oh my god, I gotta wait for my HP to come back. Alright, where's our next bee lady at? We gotta go murder another bee queen over here. I'm gonna kill you. Oh my god. I am not paying attention, and it is getting me into trouble. I don't know what you are, but I'm gonna kill you in the hopes that you drop, like, a little bit of HP or something. I need a repair kit. Anybody want to drop a repair kit for me here? Anybody? Repair kit? Alright, well, we're just gonna get after the bee lady then. There she is. She's officially down. Now, the tough part is that we gotta get back in there and extract that loot. Without getting ourselves tanked. There it is. Grab it, grab it, grab it, grab it, grab it. So at any time, once you've got the loot, you can teleport back to Rebel City if you want. Uh, there you go. We've teleported back to Rebel City. We're going to drop off this random quest over here at the pub. Oh, I'm full on loot right now. Hold on. I need to unload. Uh, this is... I'm going to drop all this loot for other players that may have recently died so that they can get back on the horse a little quicker. So there you go. I like to, I bring back full loads of loot every single time I go out so that I can drop it off for people. Because, like, you want that to happen to you, too. Like, when you die, if you do things, like, holistically from the beginning without any help, it'll probably take you about, like, an hour and a half or so to get a character back up to max level with all T7 mods. Uh, you can get your T7 mods back instantly if somebody's just, like, generous in town dropping off all the loot they accidentally picked up while they were fighting bosses, farming materials, or whatever. And so I try to do the same thing. You know, just to help out. Just to be like a part of the community. Other people have done it for me, so I do it for them. Uh, there's that right there. And that gave us copper armor. 
which unfortunately is much worse than what we already had. Kind of a bummer there. I was hoping for something better. Oh, that dude. Oh, that level 6 engine. I wanted that. Oh, uh, well. It's kind of a feeding frenzy whenever somebody drops loot. But the nice thing is not everybody can equip everything, so once they take the stuff they want, they'll spit it back out again, and there's a chance that the thing that you wanted will still be laying there. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. We just got a Tier 5 gun and a Tier 5 engine from whoever that was that generously just dropped that stuff in the middle of town. So there you go. Good. Feels fine. Uh, let's talk about the microtransactions real fast. This game does have microtransactions. There's two different types of currency. You've got scrap, which you can use for, like, crafting and buying stuff from the store. And that'll allow you to get, like, cosmetics and stuff like that. So this is the place where you're going to buy stuff. Uh, there's, let's say, I don't know, you want, like, a new trail for your plane, right? Uh, you would click right here. And you can get, like, a new chem trail, essentially, or a new, like, vapor trail or whatever for your plane if you want. You can see here that they cost 3,000 scraps. I've gotten about 1,000 in just, like, three hours of playing the game from doing quests and whatnot. You stack it up reasonably quickly. It doesn't take forever. Uh, whereas the money, it's going to cost you, like, 1,000. And then you can buy currency right here through Steam. And actually, let me check on the prices real fast, because I don't know exactly what they are so that I can weigh in on that. Oh, never mind. It's got them here. So apparently you can get 5,000 coins for 5 bucks, and they give you a couple extra each time around. And that's going to be almost entirely so that you can buy, like, skins and things like that to kind of make you stand out against other planes. Aside from that, like, I don't even know what's in, like, the upgrades and boosts area. Ah, that's going to be account upgrades. So... Uh, you could spend like 7500 to increase your bank size, so like $7 basically. Uh, you can get more skill loadouts, you can get apparently double XP, things like that. Uh, if you're worried about that being like pay to win, it's not. Like you can hit max level, like this is purely convenience. I can hit max level in about an hour if I can find a good group. And I can be fully geared inside of that hour too. And so like, I'm not really sure why you would ever buy one of those. But there you go. We can also get more hangar slots because, as you may have noticed, I only have two hangar slots over here. I can only have two planes at a time. And so, like, I have to play the Paladin and the Shield Maiden until one of them dies. Or I take one of them out in suicide uh, so that I can bring out another plane. This would be the only thing that I kind of wish you could earn inside of the game is more hangar slots. But I understand that the game has to make money somehow. And so it's $7, I guess, for... Well, not $7. Yeah, about $7, actually, for another hangar slot so that you can have another model of plane in your backlog, I guess. You can only play one at a time, so like, usually you'll have an open slot after your character dies and you can swap models and you can swap planes, uh, but there you go. Uh, that's how the game is monetized right there for being a free game. But anyways, don't let the XP boost or anything like that worry you. I played Realm of the Mad God for a long time and in this game I've hit max level like five different times already just in one evening of playing. And it's not hard to do. You just got to find people that have, like, an XP train going, which is basically a bunch of players just rolling through mobs super heavy and, like, eliminating everything that gets in their way. That new gun is hitting hard. I like it. Megusta. Let's go find this boss over here. Let's go kill this boss and see what he drops. It looks like there's another player up there. Yeah, let's go help him out. We'll teleport to him. It looks like hopefully he's not, like, in the middle of it right now. Sometimes you teleport in and you just get annihilated because you're in the wrong place at the wrong time. Okay, so we got to eliminate these platforms right here in order to get the shield down on the main boss. Gotcha. I think that's doable. I definitely think we can accomplish that. I got to outrun this firewall, though. There you go. Wipe those out. All right. Get that killed. That one's down. Kind of just got to run the gauntlet here and get inside of his radius. Oof, almost got toasted right there, though. You almost gave me the old whooping. I'll pop my abilities so he can have a bonus to defense if he needs it. I don't know if he needs the bonus to defense. Hey, the enemy is down. Hey, killed the boss. Nice. Oh, cool. We got an aura of defense level 7. We got an engine that's level 7. Man, we got a bunch of goodies over here. I'll kick those out in case he needs them. I doubt it, but there you go. We've already got, like, the second highest tier on both engine and on our special ability. So you see what I mean? Like, the game is really easy to level up and gear up in. So, like, I don't know why you would ever buy any of the boosts or anything. It just doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't seem like a necessary expenditure that would have to happen. But I guess some people like to cut in line even further. Maybe an hour is too long and they want to do it in, like, 20 minutes. I don't know. I don't really want to be in this area. I want to go find, like, a high-level area and, like, get some shooting done. That's what I want to do is I want to go kill some big bads. 
Uh, let's kind of head towards the edge of the map and see what we can find, because we've got a decently high-level weapon right now, so I think we'll be okay. Uh, gear matters a lot more than level in this game, in all fairness. Like, we've got the HP to take a couple of hits without having to worry too much about just getting, like, annihilated. There we go. Get these dudes out of the way. All right, I gotta weave my way through these weird little corridors over here to find my way out of here. But watch out for these dudes behind us. They can be kind of dangerous. Uh, they can kind of chain hit you every now and again. So we're gonna want to be, like, tail gunning and getting them out from behind us as much as possible before we move along. All right, so dog base over here. This kind of seems like where we want to be. Uh, this game does have permanent, by the way, progression based. So I don't think Realm of the Mad God, when I played it, had permanent progression to get back to my earlier point, which I think I forgot I was making. Uh, Realm of the Mad God, I don't think that it had permanent progression back when I played. Like, there was no reward for, like, dying after a certain level or anything else like that. This game, as you survive longer, you unlock new mechas, and then on top of that, you're also... Uh, gonna unlock some other goodies too. So based on the XP that you farmed while you were alive, you'll unlock skill points, which you can put into a permanent talent tree that you can use to upgrade whatever plane that you want and make it a little bit better and a little bit stronger. In addition, at max level, there's also kind of a form of permanent progression for the individual plane before it dies, where what you're gonna do with that is you'll start picking up these rare drops, which are various like lubricants and like engine tuning guides, and platings and stuff like that and you can stack each of those about 20 times to force your plane to have more stats than it would have at max level just like you could in Realm of the Mad God with I think strength potions and stuff like that and so like this game basically if you like Realm of the Mad God you will like this game because it's got all the same mechanics going on it's just in a different setting with different characters and like a different graphical scheme and that's pretty much the best that I have to say about it for right now. Not the best I have to say about it, because I'm actually really enjoying the game. But I guess that's all that I have to say about that right now. Steambirds Alliance is a really fun game, and I have been enjoying it tremendously. Time will tell if this game gets underneath my skin the same way that Realm of the Mad God did. I don't know. I can't guarantee you anything along that line, because like Realm of the Mad God was a very special game that came along at a very special time in sort of like Steam history. Steambirds Alliance does do a fantastic job at recapturing the essence of what made Realm of the Mad God such a great game that you could sit and play for like nine hours straight without realizing what happened, you know, glaring at the clock like, oh my god, I can't believe I went OT like that. Uh, but time will tell. The game is still developing. They've dropped a couple of updates since I got access a week or so ago. Have they dropped it? I'd have to check, actually. I know they dropped an update, like, earlier this week that increased the amount of bosses that are in max level areas and some new boss variants. And updates like that are what's going to keep this game alive. It just needs more stuff like Realm of the Mad God had with all of their random raid bosses and stuff like that. So anyways, keep an eye on it. The game is free, so you don't hazard anything by trying it out for a couple minutes and seeing if it's fun. Performance-wise, I do think the game could run a little bit smoother, but as far as the game aesthetic and, like, the core gameplay mechanics and the stepping stairs that they put you on, I think the game is really, really satisfying and fun and an easy game to tune out and play while you're watching Netflix or, you know, listening to music or whatever else. It's not the type of game that requires 100% concentration. Uh, but it is a game that does require you to check out all the little bullets on screen and make sure you don't run into them. I like it a lot. And so anyways, hopefully this helps you make a decision if you want to invest your time into the title. Steambirds Alliance. It's on Steam right now. You can go get it for free. All you got to do is check out the link down below. If you don't know who I am and what I do, my name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie gaming every single day so that you don't have to. If you enjoy the videos that I make, remember to leave a like on them. YouTube basically grades us now based on the amount of audience interaction we have. And so unfortunately, I'm forced to let you know about that at the end of every episode, which is something that I never really wanted to do with my content. I'll see y'all later. Thank you for stopping on in, and hi do everybody.